Good day, and thank you for joining us on this update for the Bush Creek East wildfire. We're joining you today from the traditional unceded territories of the Sequetmik, Silks Okanagan, Sinext, and Tanaha Nations. I'm Tracy Hughes, an information officer with the CSRD Emergency Operations Center. Joining me today is Aiden Corey, Fire Information Officer with the BC Wildfire Service. Aiden, I'm just going to jump right over to you for an update on the wildfire. Absolutely. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, today we are uh, continuing operations on the Bush Creek East Fire. Uh, we currently have 207 firefighters on the ground today, and they are split between four different areas of the fire, including uh, out to the west near Agate Bay and Adams Lake, down to Turtle Valley, as well as out uh, near Scotch Creek and in the North Shushwap. So today we had an increase in personnel. In particular, we had 48 American crew members come join our, our crew today. So they are working uh, out through Scotch Creek, Lee Creek, Onyx Creek, and through Solista. The wildfire is currently estimated to be around 43,346 hectares in size. And we did see this number increase in the last few days uh, with some infrared scanning we had uh, on multiple flanks of the fire. So we had some, uh, it's essentially a drone scanning the fire, looking for hot spots and getting a more accurate track of the fire's perimeter. So that number has been updated in the last few days, not particularly due to any significant growth, uh, but more so just more accurate mapping. And then Excellent. I'm going to go. I was going to say, if you want anything in particular, please just let me know. Sure, but, I'll jump in. Okay. Um, I'll add this piece. This is really important. So although we're entering the fall season and we're seeing, you know, cooler temperatures at night and some more relative humidity recoveries overnight, we are still ex experiencing a period of drying. So through the next three to four days uh, into the weekend here, we are expecting temperatures to stay quite high for seasonal average. So through the mid to high 20s, as well as uh, our relative humidities during the daytime period are dropping down towards 20, 30 percent in some areas. So while we are in that cooling and, and down slope of the fire season, we are still seeing activity across this wildfire. And in the next few weeks, uh, nearby communities can still expect to see smoke within the fire perimeter. This is really common on large wildfires, just like the Bush Creek East Fire. Um, these fires burn very deep and, um, you know, while it is a very big fire, it's also burning quite uh, deep into the fuel. So in the root systems and the organic material. And that's something that is going to take quite a significant amount of resources and time to continue extinguishing as we've been doing. Um, so the community is likely going to see continued smoke uh, in and around communities. Uh, if you see fire that's well within the fire's perimeter, this is very common, um, but typically not a concern. We are uh, very aware of, of the activity that's happening in and around, uh, particularly in Scotch Creek and Turtle Valley, Sorrento areas uh, with highly visible smoke. So if you are seeing that, know that we are continuing to monitor from the air, looking for these uh, hot spots, using our infrared scanning to identify those hot spots and pr prioritize them accordingly. Uh, but if you are seeing smoke rising from green unburnt fuel well outside the fire's perimeter, that should that is something that you can report to our 1-800-663-5555 phone number. Uh, they do take reports of fire 24 hours a day. Uh, so if you are believing you're seeing a new, new start that is unrelated to Bush Creek East wildfire, please go ahead and report it. Thanks, Aiden. Yeah, we've certainly had calls here uh, from folks who are seeing smoke, seeing flare-ups, especially at night, um, and wondering what to do. So that's that's really helpful. Um, the other piece um, I was hoping you might address with, uh, with people is um, the communications from BC Wildfire going forward. Um, so what's your plan for, uh, for continuing to inform the communities? Yes, yeah, so we still will have an information officer assigned to this wildfire uh, for some time here. Uh, recently, we ended the community bulletin communication that goes out every other day. And that was more so just a formal uh, document that has the information formatted in a brief, succinct document that goes to a specific, um, you know, distribution. And that's one method of communication that we use. But we also update uh, the Wildfires of Note page on bcwildfire.ca every single day. And the information that is usually included in those bulletins is on the website every single day. Um, so that is still going to be ongoing as we're responding to the wildfire. Excellent. Thanks so much, Aiden. Um, anything else you'd like to add for the audience here? 
Um, I think that's about all for me, but if you'd like, I can uh, give a quick tour of the website so that folks can, can understand where to find that information the best. Sure, that would be excellent. Thanks. Sure. I'll share my screen here. One moment. All right, so from bcwelfare.ca, uh, you can select the current welfare situation map. This is our, our brand new product this year. Uh, navigate to the fire that you're hoping to navigate to. Uh, in this one, we will go to the Bush Creek East Fire. If you select the wildfire icon, say full instant details, it will take you to the specific page for that wildfire. And now this first overview page can provide uh, brief information just about ongoing alert, alerts or orders that are in place, as well as the resources we have assigned. And then this button here at the top, this is details. This is where we are uh, providing more long form updates and details about our response, uh, outlook, fire behavior, uh, those, that sort of information. And this is updated every single day. Excellent. Yeah, that's really helpful. I know uh, we've had people wondering where exactly uh, you can navigate to, and so that's super helpful. Thanks, Aiden. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to move on with our uh, CSRD update. Um, about a week has passed since evacuation orders were lifted for those communities in the North Shushua. And as people are returning to the communities, the Emergency Operations Centre here at the CSRD is starting to plan the recovery phase of the wildfire event. Recovery is a long process. It can take years to complete but it really relies on a collaborative community effort. And one of the things we've learned so far is that we need to be working together in order to move forward. Um, some of the things that we have available for um, our residents includes a resiliency center. So no matter what your situation, the staff at the resiliency center are on hand to assess your individual needs and connect people with the resources that they may need, support services. You can attend uh, our Resiliency Centre in person at the Fairfield Inn and Suites, which is located at 790 16th Street Northeast Salmon Arm, or you can call the team at 250-833-3400. Our Resiliency Centre is open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Some of those services include access to Service BC, Service Canada, Interior Health, the Red Cross and other community-based organizations, all with expertise in areas of recovery. So for example, if potentially you have lost documents to the fire that are important, um, your passport, for example, uh, Service Canada will be on hand to assist you with some of those things. Um, emergency support services also remain available from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., seven days a week, and that is in the same location at the Fairfield Inn and Suites. We also have coming an upgraded recovershoeshwap.ca website. It's in the works and it will be continuing to provide information. Currently, our returning home guide is available on the recovershoeshwap.ca website, but we're going to be fleshing that out with additional information in the, uh, in the days to come. So please check back there. Uh, we're also going to be having our Emergency Operations Centre information team um, at the Sorrento Farmers Market this Saturday, September 16th, from 9 a.m. to noon. They'll be collecting feedback, listening to folks, and uh, and taking questions, answering questions from, uh, from we should, we're sure many residents still have some questions about um, the recovery process and how things are going to unfold. Um, a couple more housekeeping items here. We have some trail closures in our area due to the fire. So the CSRD has closed Mount Baldy Trail in the South Shushwap and the Scotch Creek Helena Trail and the trails behind Farrell's Field in the North Shushwap. There may be additional trail closures in the coming days. We're currently doing um, safety assessments on these areas. Um, so you can watch our website for more information. Um, as far as uh, landfills and transfer stations, typically um, our landfill um, transfer station in Scotch Creek shifts to, um, to its winter hours on September 15th, but due to the increased need for waste disposal in the North Shushwap, the Scotch Creek transfer station is extending summer hours until October 15th. Hours there are 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. seven days a 
week. Fridge and freezer disposal will also remain available at the Ross Creek Country Store, which is located at 6929 Squilax Anglemont Road. And if you need help moving your fridge or freezer, I know these are very big, heavy objects, um, you can please call John Dick at the Christian Aid Ministries, 250-517-0075. We extend our thanks to, uh, to those folks with Christian Aid Ministries. They have been helping many, many people in the North Shoe Shop and continue to do so. Um, as far as your water systems go, uh, boil water notices have now been removed from all CSRD water systems in the Shushwap. Water from those systems is safe to drink. Um, we've done uh, our due diligence in testing and water is fine from those CSRD systems. However, there are a significant number of private systems in the North and South Shushwap. If you are on a private water system, you should continue to consider your water non-drinkable until your private water service provider lets you know that it is safe to consume. And uh, I guess to just close, we want to again thank all our residents. This has been a time of incredibly high anxiety and stress for many of us in the Shushwap. And while the fire is not yet out, we are slowly starting to move along with BC wildfire away from our emergency mode towards recovery. During this time, please take care of yourselves, seek supports through our resiliency center and others if you need it, help support your neighbors, help support your friends. We can and will get through this together. Thanks very much for the update today and we will uh, continue to be providing a written update tomorrow and uh, and then we will be uh, into the next week as well and maybe be checking back with uh, with Aiden or one of her uh, her colleagues at that point. So thanks very much. Bye bye.